and we're just going to do a basic thing. We're not going to go with uh, signing it or anything. And so this is what it creates after you uh, hit OK. So you can see it does create an outlet for the window. It creates an application delegate with some very basic information. And it creates two functions, one for uh, launching and one for terminating. And uh, for the most part, you can put all your code in here, but you can also create class files and whatnot and link them to this. We're going to start off in the main view. We're going to make a really simple Hello World type application, but we're going to also ask um, for some user interaction. Uh, we're going to just use some plain text strings and some basic actions, uh, button actions. But so it shows a little bit more and a little bit how you can kind of get started uh, this with Mac. So let's start with uh, a window. So we're just going to click the window here. And let's resize the window to a little bit smaller. Something like that. We can actually change the size here. So let's say we actually want to make the window so it's 500. And 225 seems about OK. And let's constrain that as uh, a minimum size. And when it first launches on the screen, let's see if we can kind of get it to launch somewhat in the middle of the screen. OK, so we're going to look for, um, let's also get some information here. We're going to look for some label fields first. So we'll type in label down here. And you can see this little bottom area, if you've never played with Xcode before, maybe you've come from uh, something like Zojo or Live Code or some other cross-platform tool and uh, you haven't really used this in here. You can change the size of these labels. I usually either go with 80 or 100. So I'm just use one label here and I'm going to set its properties. So I want to change the direction of the text going the opposite way. And I'm going to create two of them. So uh, let's put it here with these guides and kind of space them off like that. So the first one we can label uh, its title. So we're going to ask for a name. And we're also going to have a second label here with the word result. OK. So now we're going to look for a uh, text field. And we're going to actually get two of them in here. We're going to have one first for the name. And we're going to stretch it all the way to the size of this window. And we're going to use a second for the result. And lastly, we're going to add a simple button. So let's look for a button. Well, let's go with a push button. Let's drag it here on screen, right about there. OK, and let's give it a title of a OK. And don't worry, this is not a default button. It's just showing it's selected. And we could actually resize this to be more like this. So when we go back into our size here, let's change the minimum size now to 154 to match our current size. And We also need to set up uh, alignment. And let me show you right now. If I run this right now, um, all these controls will not align uh, or be constrained to the window. So let's just run it really quick. It's not going to do anything. But you can see what happens if we try to resize it. Nothing moves. But as you can see, we did set the minimum width and height so that it does constrain to this size here. So let's go into how we do that. Um, you know, you'd think you'd start looking through all here, all how do I constrain that? It has to be this little ruler, right? Well, you have some of it. You actually are partially right. Down here in this uh, corner, you see these little icons down here? I'll kind of click my mouse in this direction. Uh, and hopefully my screen record software showed a little radar animation. What we want is this one right here. So we have to select, say, this field and go to where it says, if you hover, pin. And what you want to do is pin these things to these constraints. 
So right now it's saying 20. So it's saying the edge of this to the edge of the window is 20, basically 20 pixels. You can change the size if you want, but I'm going to pin it to that side of the window. And I'm also going to pin it over here. Okay. And I'm add these two constraints. And as you see, when I add the constraints, you can see right here what's going to happen with this field. It's going to constrain to the name label and constrain to this side over here. And let's do the same for this one. So again, we'll constrain here and here. We have to add the constraints down here and boom, they are. Now for the button, we can also constrain that. And let's constrain that to this side of the window and so that it's also constrained to the corner. Yes. And we can also give it a size, like what size we want the button to be if we want to keep it relatively the same size it is now. So we can just put a little check mark in there, hit all three constraints. And now the button will stay that same size. However, if you're using, if you're going to make this application so it works with multiple different languages, by constraining this button, uh, you might not be able to get a different language in there. Uh, something that's really long that would switch over okay. So just keep that in mind. Let's just run this and let's see what it does. Okay, and you can see there it goes. Now there's really no reason for us to kind of go up and down. We can kind of constrain that. And let's just show you how you would do that. Or I'll show you where you do it, it's not a big deal. But you can see down here minimum size or maximum size. Yeah, you can do that right here. Okay. So now we're uh, pretty much almost ready to do our programming. There's one thing uh, though, uh, we're going to ask a uh, user to put his name in and then we're going to have a result that says like hello John or hello Bob or hello Kate. Okay. So this field down here really doesn't need um, a value entered into it. So we can go here to this tab and down here you see where it says behavior. We're going to say none and that's going to make it so that field doesn't allow the user to add text. It's just the read-only text. Okay, so now we're ready to put some code uh, into all this. But first we have to uh, create outlets for the fields and an action for the button. And to do so, we can go right here. Um, see up in the toolbar. Oops, I didn't want it that big. Um, let's see if I can get it smaller again. Uh -oh. I know my screen recording software is not very big uh, on the window, so by doing what I just did, I might have made it so you guys can't see part of this window. So let's uh, let's uh, do that again. See where these circles are? We want to click there, and luckily enough, we did get the file we wanted. We want the app delegate .swift file. For such a small application, we can put all our code right in here. Uh, if it's a bigger file, you can add um, some class files and link to them, but we won't really go into that. Okay, so let's get rid of this extra view here by clicking on these final things over here. For some reason, if this this file doesn't show up and you get some other file, you can click on these little, little boxes here and you can cycle through all the files pretty much in your project. As you can see, it's the same stuff that's over here. And as I change that over here, it changes this main view. And you can do the same over here. You can change it so that you have like multiple, uh, you know, multiple views. Okay. So we want to create an outlet. There's already an uh, outlet for the window. To do so, we just select the field that we want, and then we hit the control key on our keyboard, and then click uh, the left button on our mouse. And you see it brings up this like blue string. All we have to do is drag that over to our code field and give that a name. We'll call it say field name. And you can either hit connect 
down here or you can hit return. I'll do connect right now and for this one down here again hitting your control key on your keyboard and dragging and this one here we'll call field result and this time I'll hit return and you can see it worked just like that. Okay we're good to go right there and now to get our action we do the same with the OK button. We hit the control key and we drag and we want to drag between these two these two little brackets how they're both facing the same way. We want to drag them right there. But this time we definitely want an action. I'm just going to give this a name of well you can call it anything. I'm just going to because I know it's uh, an action part of the button. I'm going to call it button process and bada boom and so here's your action that it creates for you and you're gonna put your code between these two brackets here so you're gonna go down right there and we can pretty much get that out of the way and kinda of go right into this main view so actually I wanna kinda of get it open a little bit more so we can kinda of see what we're gonna do so we're gonna ask the user for a name and it's gonna present uh, in the result field hello that person's name okay so this is going to be really simple all we need to do is take these outlets up here what we called them so we have field name and we have field result so we can take field result and we'll type that in here and as you can see it's starting to auto type already because it knows it's an ns text field and we just need a property of an NS text field of string value. And as you can see, it brings up string value almost immediately. Like it's saying, that's what we know you want to use. And you can just hit tab and hit tab again, finish it off. And to assign a value to uh, this property string value for field result, we just need to say equals. And now we get to tell what kind of string we want to put in there. Now you can just put text in there in there if you wanted to say hello world you could. And because we are going to start off with hello, you can type in hello. Now we're going to have a space. Now you could just add a space like this to it. Or and let me just show you another way you can add a space if you need to add space to uh, create another text string later. You use plus and you can use quotes but just add a white space between it like that and for us it's not really white it's on a black background and we hit plus again so we're going to now take the text that comes from that uh, field name instead of uh, creating a variable and assigning that variable the text that came from that field for this simple application we can just go field name and again, we can say string value, and that's that. So whatever's in the field name is going to be returned with hello slash that. Now, if someone doesn't type anything in there, uh, it will just say hello. So obviously, that would be something else you can do. You can check to see if someone put anything in there. But we're not going to really worry about that because this is like a very basic application. Just to get familiar of using... Uh, Xcode and Swift for making Mac apps um, because you know there's not a lot of information on how to make Mac apps with Swift there's a lot of uh, information or demonstrations at least from what I've seen and searched on the internet Swift for iOS it seems like there's a million Swift for iOS examples and like very limited slim pickings for Mac so us Mac developers are um, there's not too many of us, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let's try. Let's try what this does. So we're just going to hit run. And let's type in a name like Tony. And we'll press OK. Hello, Tony. Now let's say if we wanted to clear this uh, field like you wanted it to go again, um, you could just hit the delete key or we could do something even um, something else so let's just add one last thing in here let's bring up um, another button let's create another action 
it look again something real simple and let's add this button and let's put the word new in there meaning you can start a new button or a new name and uh, we probably want to put a constraint on here oops select that you don't you want to select it like that so it's the whole windows like that and we want to constrain it to that button right there and we also want to constrain it to the bottom we'll add it to two constraints and you can see that they are added here because this button is selected and we are in the measuring area and there you go and you can make some slight adjustments if you need to okay so we're going to do basically the same thing we did before so we can get rid of this we can open up our view here oh, and as you can see uh, what it has brought up is the uh, header file for NS application and we don't want that we want our application delegate dot swift so I'll bring that back up and again by hitting the control key and dragging this we can oops we don't want an outlet though we want an action so we want to put it at the end of our last action and you can see if you hover over this it shows you that this is a code block so you want to put it underneath that block Again, we want to make this an action. And I'm just going to give it the name of the object because that's the best way I know how to do it for myself. Otherwise, if you don't do something that you're familiar with and you know what, what it is, um, it's going to be harder for you to read your own code. Okay, so we just want to clear the data from these two text fields or clear the strings. So, it's really simple. We just take the same information we had before. We go field name, string value, and we put in equals, and this time we give it no string. But we just put two quotes with nothing in between. And we can do that twice, so we can say field result, and again, string value, again, equals, and nothing. And this way we'll clear out those fields so you could use it again. And let's just run it real quick. And let's say our name is Bob. Hello Bob. And if we do it new and then we want to say our name is Kate. Hello Kate. And again as you can see these move. And we did not constrain the up and down but you can do that from that um, same panel I showed you before. Oops, and let's stop this here. So you can always select here in the measurement view, and you can constrain the window up and down. So thanks for joining. And